All right. How y'all doing? Okay. Hey, I am Marnisha, your GPS, your God's personal servant. Thank y'all for joining me tonight, this wonderful third Monday of 2021. How y'all doing? Um, shameless Mondays. I'm the first session. I, I, I joined my, I asked my friends to join me on this one. I will be having guests each month. Um, so I'm trying to work this stream yard. So bear with me because I don't even, I got people in the room to come on, but how to add them on is the question. Can y'all hear me? I, Leah, you laughing. Okay, so you can hear me. But how do I add? Okay, I got to press you. Okay, bam. Bam. There you go. All right. There we go. So it works when you really press the buttons and pictures these days on the phone, huh? Yeah, you got to push the button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all, so I'm new to this all all the way. Thank you for uh, letting me know because I'm just going to put you in the box and I'm going to have one person in the box and it ain't going to work right. Yeah. So, and you should also be able to see people's comments and stuff off to the I side. Am. I am? You should be able to, if, you know. <laughs> all right, cool. People comment. That'd be great. So, listen, then my computer acted up. So, y'all know every time I try to do something, it seemed like something always go crazy to make me not want to do it because I was about to bag out. Um, and I don't even know if the view of this phone is right, but listen, we're going to work it out. Thank you. So, I have with me my dearest, 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 dearest friends. I don't even know how to just say more dearest than the dearest closest people to me that I believe really know me. Uh, Marnisha the Bear, Naked uh, Marnisha. Uh, because, you know, <laughs> hey, it's one of those things. Tiff is ready. Like, now I think I'm scared because Tiffany needs to do out the, buy, the glass of wine. You know? <laughs> yeah. Give me a glass of wine then. Sure. <laughs> right. I feel I'm, I'm prepared. Next time I know, we're going to have to go and go and sip up. Give me a glass of wine. <laughs> so, Tiffany, we have Tiffany and the end Czar. Is that right? Or what we call Czar? Or whatever, you know. He has had many names throughout the years. Yep, I answer to whatever name sounds like mine. Cool. So, tonight we're talking about, well, each Monday night, y'all. Y'all know I am... Um, very kind of proud of myself because God has been dealing with me for this for over a year and so and I'm finally doing it um had some ups and downs and some battles and I had to deal with myself um so I'm doing it new year new things new life everything this year is actually new with me pretty much except y'all and y'all always knew yeah. that some Something always changes with y'all. So it's always a new phase because it's called growth and maturity. Right. Is Tiffany's mic on? <laughs> I'm muted. Is... Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I have to say she in her mind. In her mind. This... Right, right. You know, so what's y'all definition? Let's get right into this. What's y'all definition of shame? Hmm. What's my what's the definition of who? Shame. Can we cheat? If you choose to. I know, I'm gonna look it up on the computer. Because I do have the computer definition. The, the... Oh, okay. <laughs> you just want to know what's my personal definition of shame. What's your personal definition of shame? Um... Something that I'm embarrassed of, something that makes me feel um, low. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I'm, guess, I'm not a shameful person, so I really don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, you know, I, I guess it, to personalize it, I probably would say, um, I, I agree with what Tiffany's saying, like things like an embarrassment um but i'm thinking i'm trying to think of another word that i would use instead of embarrassment but it's almost like a a, a feeling a feeling 
of lower, I guess you would say self-esteem or lower sense of self. Like okay. feeling like a low, and it can come from anything. It can, it can come from having done something that caused you to feel that way. Or it could just come from just any type of personal complexes you might have where you just like, you're not enough. And I'm not enough because, mm, or I'm not enough because, you know, and it could be, I did something, so now I feel guilty, which is also pushing me into a sense of feeling shame. Mm-hmm. Or it's just within my own personal self-esteem, um, I feel like a shameful Kind of like I'm a disgrace in some type of way, even though we may not use that word. Okay. Um, so the dictionary definition pretty much is a painful feeling of humiliation or distress called by the consciousness of a foolish behavior. Mm-hmm. Humiliation. Now, what is the word? That's the word I was looking for. Humiliation. Yeah. So what got me, though, at this definition, the ending of, of foolish behavior, what deems the behavior to be foolish? Mm. Mm. I think a lot of that sometimes is dictated. I think there's a personal, you know, where you feel like you should be a certain way. Now, again, now where it comes from, I think that that's, that's what we have to look at, like maybe where it came from you know like feeling like you had to be a certain way but i also think society plays a huge point into what we consider to be shameful behavior if it doesn't measure up to whatever standard there is whether it's a personal standard or a standard of a society then that causes the behavior or whatever it may be to seem like it's a shameful thing i mean now there's some stuff that's just shameful you know but i think sometimes it's, it stems from uh beliefs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tiffany, you got that eye. Um, That's that look. No, no, I was kind of going the same route he was going because I mean, the reality. My route is the way. My route is the way. No way is that. You got what you had like, sir. (laughs) (laughs) No, (laughs) man. Um, yeah, but I basically was feeling the same way because at, you deem you solidify what embarrassed you. Now, how did you get to that point? It's what you were, the values that were pushed on you. It, it just okay. comes from, yeah, all of those. Things. Okay. So when God dealt with me about this, because because I am, um, I'm not that transparent as I would like to be. I hold in a lot of, I have held in a lot of my feelings. Um, I have really came to term that in a, a long time I was passive aggressive. When I really kind of found out what the definition of it was, it, it kind of resonated with me. Like I would say how I feel, but I wouldn't be like, but it's okay. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't stand in my right or my authority of how I felt as things happened. And also, too, I was, I lived a shameful life. Growing what? up, a shameful life. Oh. Growing up in church. Um, and I have to say church, not God. Because I learned two different sectors. I learned God at home. Mm. Because my mm. father both mm. of my fathers taught me God. My mama taught me God. Now mm. I went to church and I felt like what they were teaching me did not override the church. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I got more church taught when I was always in church, everything else. And I was like, mm. especially with my papa. He'd be like, you need to know God. And about you going to that church house every Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm. <laughs> Friday. And Saturday. I think the only day I didn't go was on Tuesday. (laughs) So y'all know, y'all know my punishment was I couldn't go to church. I I experienced that at one point. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like, you can't do nothing, but you know, um, so you're on punishment. So a lot of my things where I was ashamed of was because of what I was taught in church and the presentation you were supposed to have is perfect. Have mm. this great image, have this um, right way of doing things. 
And mm-hmm. so the right way of doing things is not necessarily God's way of doing things. Mm. And mm. so it brought confliction. So, I mean, these sessions is going to be very, you know, people feathers may get a little ruffled or whatever, you know, because for me, grew up growing up in Kojikness, mm. the good old Kojik Pentecostal folk, um, we was told that you could lose your salvation. So where do it go, girl? Where do it go? Somebody tell me where it go. It go back to yeah. go just go back to God. I don't know. Um, so and so I will see my friends getting saved every Sunday. Well, not even my friends at church, just the whole church getting saved every Sunday. I didn't want to get saved on Sundays again. So I got saved on Saturday nights watching the awakening. And I knew. <laughs> so, the awakening. You know, right. The Chicago people, we know what the awakening is. You know, the best show. And it go off at 12 midnight. So I knew by some time Sunday morning came, I didn't say it's a prayer of salvation again. So I didn't have to go to the altar with everybody else on Sunday morning to get <laughs> to get saved. <laughs> so for me, I um, you know, did that whole little process. And then when I really started learning and in the Bible and studying myself. And I came on John three and one when he talked, Jesus talked to Nicodemus and it was like, what must you do to be saved? And he said, you must be born again of the spirit. You being born once of the flesh and then once of the spirit. And I said, well, God, that I'm go with what they taught me every Sunday. Cause I just got saved again. So if I can only come out my mama's womb one time, Mm. I can I can only come out the spiritual womb one time too. You know that was a now if y'all revelation I don't know hey, y'all correct me. You know anybody else joining in? Thank y'all for joining in. Please do comments. Somebody do a comment just to see if I can see the comments. But I don't know. Um. Um. But yeah, if y'all have comments? Please comment. Ask questions. Be involved. You know. So yeah, welcome to our journey. Huh? Hmm? Can you see people in here? Um, I she probably can't unless she's on Facebook. I'm logging into Facebook so that I can actually see too. Uh, she will be able to see comments and you should be able to see if people are joined in, but I don't know. Mm-mm. Somebody said, hey, y'all, you see that? Nope. No. Okay, because I do see that. I see a comment that somebody says, hey, y'all, crow. But I'm looking at it from Facebook, so. Well, you might have to be on a Facebook monitor, if you don't mind. Man of many hats. Hey, so, what I do. <laughs> um, so with that, and then the salvation thing, so it kind of challenged me even more to know of God. And then I got conflicted in myself because I need to shut up and not share my revelation because it's going against the grain of what's being said in church. Mm. And people um, looked up, I, I don't know if they looked up to me, but you know, I was a church head, y'all, y'all know that. Um, Tiffany met me, I was nothing but Jesus. I think I cussed now more than I ever cussed a day in my life. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so even even cursing ain't even seeing, but I'm not gonna go there either. So um <laughs> so with me, I grew up ashamed of just I think my look, I did, my confidence was low, my self-esteem was low. I remember walking in a hall at home and Papa told me to put my arms down. He's like, why do you walk with your arms covered up? I'm like, what are you talking about, Papa? He said, You do that all the time, you walk around like this all the time in your house. He said, what are you ashamed of? It's nothing for you to cover up. Mm. Mm. And and I'm like, okay. So like, and Papa was my main pastor. I got to give him credit. Now it's like, y'all, I'm just remembering all the things that I have been instilled. And y'all know the roughness of our relationship growing up. It was like, Tiffany, I can't stand that man. And then this, this, this. <laughs> whatever the case may be but um, but then I realized like now for me to even say the powerful scripture you overcome by your word of your testimony 
And I'm like, well, God, I guess I ain't overcoming because I ain't telling my testimony to that degree. Hmm. I hmm. will tell you what I need you to know because even if you twist it, tank it, or make it your own, it can still be okay with me. Mm. So I, I asked you all along, huh? Transparency is a monster. It is. And I envied Leander because this nigga is the most transparent nigga I know. And I was like, I wish I can tell it like that. And I'd be like, that nigga got some balls because I wouldn't have told him about that. <laughs> Just like on Facebook and telling him like that. Like, did he say that for real? You know, and um, so I, I pray for that. But anyway, I still don't get it because that's your gift. Um, I just want to be obedient. That's my gift right now, obedient. Um, so I want y'all to ask me questions when I start talking because I'm going to share my shameful story. And this is the deep one, y'all, for me. Growing up, loving God, but being a lesbian. You a lesbian? Girl, boy. <laughs> oh, a, a whole lesbian. Oh. <laughs> she, she, she one of them gays. <laughs> wow. Yo, yo, my nigga, you can calm that down, those, son. Those are the things that cause shame right there. Them, them. Right. Oh, right. You're right. You're one of the gays. One of the gays. <laughs> I just thought you knew how to play the drums and play basketball. <laughs> I thought that too. <laughs> I really did. You know, and plus I was very sheltered. So when I realized I liked a woman, I was like, oh, that ain't supposed to go through my thoughts. That ain't supposed to. That woman walked past me. I suppose remember that smell. That just made me feel some type of way, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, <clears throat> when I realized, well, the first thing I was so sheltered, I didn't even, I just really thought I was crazy. But at church, somebody asked me, I was on the phone, pay phone. Y'all yeah, know this was years ago. Um, they were like, you're on the phone with your girlfriend? I'm like, I'm on the phone with a friend. That's a girl. No, your girlfriend. I'm like, hmm? My girlfriend? Nisha. I know you got a girlfriend. Like, what you mean, the girlfriend? They was like, we don't never see you in a nigga's face. Mm. We don't even no boy's face. And you play the drums, and you're a basketball, and you're a tomboy. Well, I just, I'm a tomboy. That don't mean I like girls. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So then that kind of just like, that's a real thing? I can really have that? Like, I just don't have, <laughs> I don't have to just watch TV and just think about being with the woman. But it can actually happen. But mm. yeah. L Latasha, so, Latasha Chambers says, How old were you when you realized? When I realized, realized I was uh, 15. Mm. But when I look back over my life, <laughs> <laughs> as I look back, oh. <laughs> that's why I got to say. But when I look back over, uh huh, I remember when I was eight years old, when I would watch, you know, intimacy on TV, I gravitated more to the woman. Hmm. So it wasn't like, oh, I want that man to be kissing me like that. I'm like, oh, that woman is so, looking nice. So you want the hard question? I don't care. Just give it to me. I was like, wait a minute. So what you need for me, friend? Because. Uh, you don't want me to ask me questions. These people ain't ready for my type of questions. So how do you know? How do you know that? Okay, so you said that you know a woman walked by, you smell that smell, blah 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 blah, or you notice that there's this attraction to woman. How do you know that that attraction to a woman was one for romance? What like? How do you know that it wasn't just something you craving from a female? you know, like a female because perspective. <clears throat> that's what I thought it was too, just me having friends. You know, mm -hmm. like, oh, I just want a female friend, a best friend, because I kind of lacked that too. You know, growing up, mm -hmm. a real, real big best friend, I was kind of always the third wheel. So, it was okay. Um, 
But I realized that I guess when a woman touched me and my I, I got goosebumps. Okay. So it was just like that was different feeling because I was a toy, a play toy for the boys in the church. Now I would I let the boys fill up on me in the church house. You know what I'm saying? And I did all the kissing and the making out on trips and stuff and fondling the boys, you know. So I was the one flag on the play, girl. Flag on the play. Wait a minute. <laughs> Okay. Hold on, I gotta take right. Let me I'll drink to that. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> so I knew what it was to kind of be touched and you know, you know, play with and fundle with. Um, but I but when a woman just like she kind of grazed me and it was just seemed a little more affectionate behind it, I was like, oh, I like that. Well. Shira K. Moore says, here's my name and number and a dime. Call me anytime. <laughs> Call me. Now, I don't know what she mean by that. Shara, 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 K., Shara, Shara K. Moore. Okay. S-H-A-R-A. Okay. Okay. Get yourself together, girl. Because <laughs> you wanted to come out and laugh. I'm laughing. It's to be the minister to the people. You're welcome. God bless my ministry. Um, bless, bless your bless ministry. Your <laughs> I don't even know how to see how to that one right there. You know what I'm saying? I just thank you. Um, so very well. Yeah. Next question. So, um. <laughs> Let me think, girl. Let me think, cause I have so many of them. Okay, so <clears throat> go ahead, Tiff. Go ahead. You got it. Go ahead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I dealt with this and realized this, being over, kind of really when it hit me, being over youth choir, you, youth, youth, youth drama, a youth leader, a youth altar worker, a youth everything. I was in the church. I was serving, worshiping, and all that good stuff. And I said, well, God, I got to go ahead and get, I got to come to glory because I'm going to hell anyway because of this. So mm. it took a toll on me emotionally. Um, and a lot of the thing was I didn't want to shame my mother. Mm. Mm. And I was so concerned, even as an adult, to see what my what my mom people was gonna say to see what the church people was gonna say um because it took me a while to tell my mom um and so but y'all was the first people I told um yeah girl you didn't have to tell me girl who you thought we was (laughs) I'm just saying and Tiffany was the last one I told her she was mad at that because she was the first one I knew (laughs) you had to tell Uh, me you had to tell me because uh, yeah, I, I just thought people had to play the drums and play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, until a person tells me directly from their, I can think what I want to think. Mm-hmm. But but until they tell me, and or unless I see them or get invited in, I try to remain because I be, and I say this because I have male, yeah, because I have okay. male friends who are feminine, but they identify as straight, right. So, I, hey. <laughs> so yeah, when I dealt with it, and I and you know I told y'all, and I still dealt with it, and I know I'll be like y'all gotta pray, or whatever the case may be, and I don't even think I ever asked for prayer. I just was like, this is, is it. And Leanza was still talking about, okay, we're <clears throat> still gonna get this youth conference together, and I'm like, no, dude, this no, you know. Um, but my like, I know my senior year. Of high school when I kind of really engaged with the female. Um I pretty much I was going to that chick house, leaving class, ditching, all that other stuff. And so I was still a tomboy, but I was still trying to be a little girly until she pulled out that strap. I was like, hell uh uh-uh. uh no that ain't going mm-mm. right for the play moment. That ain't happening. Can we ask this question on I'm gonna ask it for you, Tiff. So, <laughs> did she pull out the strap for you or for for, for, for me? 
<laughs> for you to wear, for you to wear, or for you to receive? No, 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 no. no. To receive in his name. To receive in his name, pun intended. In his name. Because <laughs> it, it wasn't going to be in my name. Okay. So, Nisha, you ain't never told me this, girl. You got the, you can't do this. You're supposed to warn us first. See, and I'm, it, it's, this is coming back to me as I'm going through my journey. That's what happens. Of, you know, of That's this. what happens. That's what happens. So yeah, I I I and, and met, she had graduated the year before. And so she lived right down the street, not too far on St. Charles. And then it got shut down when my grades came back because I was failing English, honest, real bad at a, at a 6.8, because I kept ditching seven period to go get some attention. And so I was like, oh Lord. And Papa shut that down. And I showed, I said, teacher, teacher, can I please, can I, you know, whatever, whatever. I, I worked my butt up, you know what I'm saying. I was on lockdown. Papa picked me up from school and dropped me off. He wasn't playing. No games with my butt, okay. Girls raised up, and it was cool, okay. But then I was just like, <clears throat> senior year, I mean, no senior year. I went very depressed, whatever the case was. And I said, God, are you still sure you call me? Because I don't think I'm called. I don't think I'm anointed. I don't think none of that because you dare would not allow to, yourself to use me in this plateau. You know? And and God, I said, take it away. I don't want this. It feels good, but I don't want it. And I couldn't shake it. And I never had sexual intercourse yet with a woman. I just could not shake the naturalness of it for me. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> I just, I couldn't get together. And so I, I, I struggled in silence. You know, mm. I, I did a lot of struggling in silence. Um, so freshman, and I, and I remember praying, God, I just want you to, I want you. And it was something Pastor Ivan was saying about just being real. Tell God what you want. For real, for real. Um, so I remember praying, God, take everything away from me but that. Because at first, it was take it away. Then I prayed and said, take everything away from me. But that I want all of you, but don't touch that yet. Because I'm enjoying that. Hmm. So hmm. I still kept worshiping, still kept praying. My relationship still was, you know, I was striving closer to God, even though I still wanted to have my fleshly desires, as we said in the church. Okay, to hold on to your fleshly desires. Um, and I'm holding on to my fleshly desires. And then one day it was like, dang, I'm not lusting no more for it. It wasn't gone. It just, I wasn't craving it and lusting after it anymore. But God was, go ahead. No, go ahead. So I'm like, God, now I'm having more dream. You're using it me even more. Um, I, I, I'm I'm being ministered to on a different way, like you know. So I asked you don't touch it. I didn't think you were still gonna use me and talk to me uh-huh. and give me people word and pray and do all this other stuff. I didn't think you was gonna do that, mm-hmm. but I was being real with him, and I just knew just to be real with God and let God do the rest. Then mm-hmm. later I was like, okay, well. Just take it away again. That whole little cycle. So then I was straight but distracted. <clears throat> Y'all remember when I just said it? I'm straight. Straight but distracted. Yes, I think I remember I was, that phrase. Yep, straight but distracted. I'm straight, but women are my distraction. Hmm. And so hmm. with that, um, <clears throat> I felt okay. Then I would get into things where I would have friendships with females um, or scared of having, I had a couple of friends. Um, but when I started really engaging, I was like, oh yeah, okay, cool. I could do this. Stop going to the clubs. I'm illegal now. I, I, I leave youth night, go and change and get in baggier clothes than what I had on before. Cause I really wasn't baggy, but I would go and change my whole image just to go to the club. Mm-hmm. And then 
that that didn't resonate with me because I wasn't comfortable. So I was going somewhere that I wasn't comfortable because I didn't feel comfortable in what I had on. And all the women that I was attracted to, hope this is going so on. All the women that I was attracted to, they wanted women that didn't look like boys because they were still in closets themselves. So I was like, I could have been who I was and not dressed so baggy, baggy. I couldn't, I didn't have to change my image and I could have had all this problem of, mm. you know, the gum, you know. So I, I was dealing with it, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, I don't even know if y'all knew where I was going, but I was gone in that car youth night. After, you know, I'm gone, you know, went to the club and had a little fun and did the X, Y, Z. Um, I thought you were going to play basketball. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> so it was like, I don't know, the more I tried to run from this thing, God would still use me because I even got to a place of in, in college saying, okay, well, God, if I am, this is who I am. But I'm not going to engage with it. So use me to help people not engage in what they really feel is natural. Mm, wait, say that. Use me to be the to one help to help, help not people. engage to what they feel is natural. Right. So help me help them so be I unnatural. Would, right. So I will sustain myself so I can say <clears throat> I'm not touching the good because it was good for me. I'm not touching the good. So I can say it's you can you can live this life and not be entangled. Mm. So you mean to tell me that you uh -oh. think that God can use you as in all your homosexuality? That I could that God could use me? Well, he couldn't. I, I didn't think he could. could. I didn't never but, think he could. But you, you, you mean think it, you mean it now? Then I didn't think he could, but he kept using me, and I kept telling him to shut up. Now, oh yeah, he can use me. He was using me. So it, it was. So does that? So does that tell you something about you, or tell you something about God, or both? Oh shoot! I wasn't expecting that question. Um, both, both. Mm -hmm. you know um and when when i you know coming on across different words and script, different scriptures when god and god, you know what god personally said this to me and i think the word of god is great but the personal word of god that you get off of the rhema word he come down i was um he let me know he said i was what no prayer i was sitting in church i'm like i'm not mm -mm, i can't even worship and praise you he said, oh, so is that your God or am I your God? Like, wait, wait. Meaning, was, was the issue your God? Was He said, don't ever allow your issue to become your God. Mm. That's good. That's good. So that freed That's me good. because I was saying I couldn't worship God because of my issue. So that meant I was worshiping my issue and gave them more power than I was giving God. And then what was okay? So then the question then so then my question is what was the issue? Was the issue was the issue homosexuality or was the issue religion or what was taught to you regarding those things? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So it's like because right. you weren't worshiping necessarily worship or making homosexuality uh, or lesbianism your uh, god, but you were making the feelings that came associated with. You ain't supposed to be that way. Right. Become your God, so to speak. Is that what, like, am I getting that right? Yeah, yeah. I denounced God and it's like, it is what it is, so I can't worship you. So it was just like, I gave them more credit and power. And it mm. was because mm. of, it mm. was because of society, you know, everything else, especially back then. But I knew that God, you called me, you said you you confirmed in me, you, you used me, you know, all this other stuff. Aaron, Aaron Booker says, uh, funny how we pray to be used, but resist the method. Mm, come on, Booker. That was good. That was good. That was good. I got to write that down. Hold that thought. Lata Latasha Chambers said, mm. <laughs> 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 mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, funny how we, right how, we, 
funny how we pray to be used, but we resist the method. That's really good. That That's was good. real good. I'm, I'm that right boy, sound, boy, boy, it sounded like I taught you something. No, I just want <laughs> That was good, though. That's good. Yeah. That is. We do resist the method. That's wow. Really good. wow. Any more comments? That was it. We got so even, comments. but even so, even with that, with 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 Aaron's statement, you know, we pray to be used, but then we resist the method. Is there somewhere in there where, in that resistance of resisting the method, we're saying something? You're saying to God, "Well, use me, but you can't use me like this. You right. can't use me in this nature that I'm in, or you can't use." It. So basically, we're trying to be God's God, or put a stipulation mm -hmm. on God. Or, right. or put a stipulation on God, but it, but then it's still, I think, like you said, yeah. oh, shame, shame, shameless Monday. Is it is all of that coming from shame? Is that the thing that has really been? Is that really our problem? Like, is is ultimately the problem is that we're engulfed in this sense of shame because we always talk about okay, we serve an unconditional God, He loves us unconditionally, but yet and still, the way we act or respond is as if He can't accept us. When God has radical acceptance, in a exactly. sense, or, or we, we call it radical acceptance. To God, it ain't radical acceptance. To God, it's like, uh, no, nigga, I love you. Like, I made you, you know. Oh, did I lose your funding by saying nigga? Oh, this Facebook, not YouTube. My bad. <laughs> Can't say that on YouTube, you lose your funding. But yeah, oh. so, but yeah, it's like, so is the real issue in a lot of this, is it shame and, and where that shame has come from? Um, and then trying to dictate to God how he uses us based on something that we feel shameful about, but he ain't even looking at us in that way. Exactly. Because he's I don't not. Think it's, I don't think it's shame at all, actually. I think we identify the wrongness of it. Because um, we ain't shamed to feel how we feel. You're not shamed to have a have these feelings. You feel bad because you were taught that it was wrong. It, who taught you that it was wrong? Who was shamed? Not so, again, so, so the shame so, come from the teacher of where they placed it at. Right. But ultimately, so, we're not shamed. We're not shamed in those feelings. Well, you, you wasn't shamed when you had that. It was more of an exciting, hello, what is this moment? There was no shame. It was the thought of how that person taught you that they would be shamed. It, it had absolutely nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with us. Hmm. Hmm. Dr. Riley used to say, Dr. Riley used to make a statement and say, where would you be? What would you have done if you knew that? He used to frame it in the sense of what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Right. Yeah. I and that. We shame that in the, and let's reframe that in the same way of talking about shame. How would you have felt about all of those experiences that you had if you didn't feel that there was a wrongness to it? You know, or if you weren't taught that there's a wrong, a wrongness to it. Do you think a lot of the struggle or like that struggling, that back and forth, that cycle, that whatever it is that you went through with it, uh, use me, God, or or now just, you know, take it away, but don't take it all the way away or, you know, all of the stuff that you went through, all of those. Do you think that it would be the same if you were never taught that this is wrong? Like, and what I'm saying is, does your heart, and this is a question that I've asked a lot of people that I do uh, coaching with and what, like relationality sessions with, does your heart, not your religion, not what you read in the Bible, not what does your heart, do you feel a sense that this is off or right. that this is wrong? Or was that too early for you to even recognize that at that stage? Uh, I felt like it was off because it felt good. Oh, so then that speaks to something else. So you're not supposed to feel good. Exactly. Feeling, good is, the Feeling good is the devil. Exactly. Anyway. Like they say, the only wow. thing they would talk about in church really is sex, fornication before marriage. That's what deem you holy or not holy. Mm. Wow. Wow. You know, girl, church people stress me out. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm not even going to comment on that. I, I'm not even I can't comment because I'm going to be real. Yeah, no. So, uh, <laughs> But yeah, we want God's personal. What what are you, Marty? Should the GPS? You God's personal yeah. servant. 
yes. to have a nice show. Yes, baby. We're going to keep it GP on, I mean, rated PG on here. <laughs> oh, Father, <laughs> Lord. I think, oh, my mama scared me. She, she done walked up in here. She didn't scare me, mama. Didn't. <laughs> so what I, I hear you saying is you blame your parents. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> you better be glad she had Denise walked out that door. <laughs> oh, dang. I wanted her to hear that. I wanted her to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so um, Latasha, Latasha says oh, okay she said I have literally been texting and erasing, I guess she want to say some stuff but then she she's backing out Tasha, don't Latasha. back out girl, come on come on go on and say it, she say <laughs> yeah, say what you say, say what you gotta say and I guess if, if, if you're going to have a, sh a, a platform like this, and you're going to do something called Shameless Mondays, and it's not a, an issue, and I, and I, and I want to make sure I'm understanding it. it's not so much just to flaunt things that we, to flaunt anything it's ultimately about being able to be transparent and to get free right, and overcome it and to overcome, and, then, and, and maybe even put some other things in perspective, because a lot of what we've been taught that, man, it's man, look, you, you made the comment about me and transparency is that my my motivation behind that and I don't necessarily suggest that everybody do it, although I do believe that being transparent frees us. Everybody else talk about forgiveness and this is that other. I think that being transparent frees us, but at the same time, it puts you into a space of recognizing what other people really think about you. And that can cause pain. Because right. if you don't want them to feel a certain way about you, then but I did it personally was because I had a lot of people saying I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Now, y'all know my revelation regarding love. You know, so it was like, do you? Or do you love right. what you see of me? Or do you love what you want me to be to you hmm. and for you? So for me, I needed to know, and, and this is my own personal journey growing up in a way that I felt alone most of the time by myself. I wanted to know, do these people really mean it when they say they love you? Right, because I feel I have felt love deprived. And I think that a lot of us do, mm -hmm. you know. So in order to find out, I had to be honest enough to say, when you find out, you have to understand that this may be painful. But the pain of finding out that they didn't love me was greater at, for me at the time. And I guess still in that time, because I'm still pretty transparent, was greater than walking around thinking they love me and they really don't. Right. And see the difference is your transparency for me. You're transparent. Tiffany is really, really, but she I don't call her transparency. Tiffany don't give <laughs> Now wait now. Now hold on. Let me explain my sad. Let me explain my sad. Like no, I mean I, I, that is just a beautiful thing because it so, no, it ignited because um two reasons. One, my grandmother used to say all the time, if you got to lie about it, it ain't good for you. I mean, you ain't grown enough to do it. And if, if you got to, if you got to lie about it, you know, it's just, it's just, something, I don't know why it resonated with me, but it did. But I also learned very early on that my life was not my own because um, there were so many, uh, younger people who kind of flocked to me and just mm -hmm. watched me like a hawk. So it was very easy for me to be transparent. I didn't have to learn how to be. Um, it was an open invitation. Mm -hmm. So my, sh my shift was a little different. However, yeah, but I think you were in high school. See, I, see, that's the thing with you, the beauty of you. I didn't know you in church. Facts. Mm. So you didn't have to you didn't you didn't filter her through that, even though she was right. a church girl. But you didn't church filter girl. her through that. I didn't even know zone. she was a church girl as much as her mouth was so potty until she I had know. that YPC jacket on. That like, mouth, baby. Do you that know mouth. you love the mouth for real? We, we had to cover up the YPC sign on her jacket. This same mouth that could cut you out could cast out them same demons. So let me tell you something. Don't listen. 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 Now, <laughs> fact, fact. <laughs> right. Shara, Shara says. Shara says, and this kind of goes, may even be in line with what Tiffany said, but she says, I have always been taught that if a person feels shameful or guilty or something, uh, oh, shameful or guilty of something, that is only a sign you shouldn't do it. What is your take on this? Do I need to read it again? Y'all got it. No, I got it. Tiffany, you want to go ahead? I, that's, yeah, because that was kind of my method growing up. 
Like, if, if you have to lie about it, it ain't worth doing. So always, so shame was never a part of my life because I was I was just always like, if I'm if I, I'm if I'm gonna do it, fuck these people. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna do whatever I want to do, and I don't care because I, I just. And even when it was stuff that other people thought I should have been ashamed of. It just see, the thing, for me, I was I knew that if I do this, see this how I always thought of a, a day ahead. If I do this and people find out what they're gonna think about me. So I didn't do things if I didn't want nothing negative said about me because I did it, because it was gonna get out. See, that's that Kojic mess because I was brought up Baptist. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Ernest, yeah. Me, honey, she told you how she F-E-L-T about it and that was it. She ain't got time. Girl, if you're going out here, do what you're going to do. And then pray about it later. Just make sure you love the Lord at the end of the day. And that, I, I, and I, that was, <clears throat> really? I was just saying, I think like even with Shara's question, it's like I feel like if it's like the way she framed it, you know, like you thought of a person feels shameful or guilty about it, that they shouldn't do it. But I think that that has to be weighed. Like that has to be weighed mm -hmm. through where is the shame and guilt coming from? Because there are some things I think we should be shamed of. Like mm -hmm. th th if, if I'm put in a situation and I respond in a way that I know was not loving, I do feel like mm, now, see, that, that, was, that was off and that was wrong. But when it comes to certain things like who I who but let's use the example that you've used with this in your transparency about you know you being a lesbian or this that, and the other who I love if I sense that the love for that person is pure I have no shame regarding it I don't care what and I'm not saying this in a way against well I may be saying this in a way against I don't care what what this Bible says mm -hmm. and I also think y'all don't understand that Bible you know or the scripture says. Yeah, the scripture says such and such. It's the scripture says a whole bunch of stuff that you doing, right? You know. Right. So it's like for me, I always I have been this person, and I think that this is why people may have. And this is not to say that I've done it all right or I've never been ashamed because I have, but I look at it from the standpoint of a lot of people filter their thoughts, their thoughts and their sensings and whatever through scripture. I mm -hmm. I filter scripture through what I sense because mm. I have an awareness. Then I can't explain it. I have a sense of oneness with God. And I feel like, why not just ask my father and confirm it maybe in the scriptures and different things that I may read or whatever. Mm -hmm. And again, not to say I haven't read something that, that it didn't correct me. Even in that, it says we prophesy in part and we know in part, which means that we, we, get, we still got to go do the research to figure out what, what, what it means. So you see where it's coming from. Yeah. But even that, it's like, but ultimately, do we really believe that the word of God is written on our heart? If I believe that the word is written on my heart, yeah. and, and listen, I'll go, a, I'll go a step further on your life, won't do it on mine. Um, <laughs> that in some ways, we are the word. Just like you said, Jesus is the word. I am the, the word became flesh. Whatever. So are you. Right. right. Yeah, but, but that's right. hard. That's blasphemy to folks. That's, that's heretical. You know, you're well, it's okay because you know? I do say that. Like, it's like we but, are yeah, God. We are this. Like this is who we are. We, you know. So if we really believe that that's written on our heart, I research the word on my heart. I go and search it on my heart and sit before God. It's like I was a worship leader all of those years, right? You know, and taught worship, taught relationship with God. So it's like, do you not think that I sit with God and be like, God, is this? There's things that He's corrected me on. It's like, mm mm. Mm -mm, bro. Mm -mm. You need to go back and fix that, or you need to go back and whatever. And there are things where He ain't said nothing about. Right. Mm -hmm. right, and it, that's what. So when I ask, when you go to the depths of your soul and to the depths of your heart, that's all I do. Even with the relationality stuff, is bring us back to the space. What is your heart saying? I know what your teaching has said, and it may align. They may say the same thing, but what is your heart saying? What I found out is most of us don't know our heart. We don't know. We're not intimate with that sense of oneness between ourselves and God. We're intimate with religion and society mm -hmm. and that's what we've it. been taught. And the and the and the and our mind going and all that. We're intimate with that, but we're not intimate with that still space that says, "You good with me?" Hmm. 
right. And that goes back to when I said, when God gave me that revelation about the, your, don't let your issue become your God. That was a personal word. Period. Mm, personal to you. Know, you. That was Latasha personal. Asked, Latasha asks, what does it mean? Okay, what does it mean to be transparent? And she says, I have conviction in my heart. Mm, okay. What is so it I mean? guess that's a two. That's yeah. What does it mean Before. to be transparent? And then her next comment, uh, uh, Shara said but, exactly. And then Natasha's next comment was, um, "I have conviction in my heart." And the con conviction out in her heart was going along with what you said about your spirit and your alignment with God. Okay. God. Okay. Right. That went with that. But mm -hmm. to be transparent, <clears throat> I believe it. It all it depends on each situation you're in. You know, because I can say I well, I do say I'm an open book. It just depends on what page you on, or what chapter you on. Mm -hmm. I don't have no problem sharing my, you know, my story. But if I, if you're not, if you ain't made it to chapter ten yet, you ain't gonna get that part. Mm -hmm. You you gonna get it into a way that I may grace you a little with it, but I'm not gonna go in depth with that. So being transparent is being open. Being transparent is sharing. Being transparent is kind of you know what? I can't even say testimony because we know how to testify, church testify, and um, people get set down real good because y'all ain't really saying nothing. Um, and we say the good cliches of oh, we now let me not let me say I know we all thankful that God woke us up this morning. I know we thankful to have a job. You know I know that those good old good testimony, but I really believe the scriptures say you overcome by the word of your testimony. That means the things that you have been tested upon, you have had life upon, you have had a journey upon, and you had overcome it because it didn't overcome you. So and I it, know. And it, go ahead. Yeah. Can I expound on that? Like, because yeah. it, it says, so it says, you overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony, yeah, right? And time. and even in the sense of, you know, overcoming by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony, when you study that, the word of our testimony is not even necessarily what we've been through. The word mm -hmm. of our testimony is the thing that we were just saying a minute ago, the word of who we really are, of mm. who we ultimately is. Oh, uh, who we ultimately is. Y'all get what I'm saying. It was like <laughs> who we who we ultimately are, which is going to include certain things that you've gone through and certain things. But the testimony part of it is, is that those things didn't kill you, right? Because the word on the inside of you is much stronger than the issues and situations that we go through. So our overcoming is by the word that is already on the inside, the word of our, the word of our testimony. It's ultimately more so about that, not even necessarily just, oh, I went through this and I got through it. Those were the details. You got through it. Right. The word, the testimony part, the word of the testimony part was you showed up as, as, as a reflection of God. You mm -hmm. showed up as an indestructible, you understand what I'm saying, as an indestructible being or whatever. And that's how you actually overcame. You overcame because something in your soul can't really truly be broken or in your spirit can't really truly be broken. All right. You know, so it's like it puts it, it brings us to that space of understanding the depths of who we really truly are. You know, transparent, the definitions for transparent, uh, and I think these are pretty good. One says, um, allow light to pass through so that the objects behind it can be seen distinctly or can distinctly be seen. Um, easy to perceive. Uh, transparent means allowing light to pass through mm. so that objects behind can be seen can be distinctly seen. So I was uh, about to just say, before pause that before you read that, I was about to say, even when we the overcome of the word of our testimony, it, it's a reflection of not just us overcoming, but helping others to overcome. And it, okay, go ahead. And yeah, that's the thought. reflection behind it. Mm -hmm. um, easy to perceive or detect. And the last definition says, uh, having thoughts, feelings, or motives that are easily perceived. So it, it, it basically puts me in this idea that it's like, there's nothing hidden about me. And, and not only is there nothing hidden, but I like the part that says that allows light to pass through so that you could see. Transparency is not necessarily, there's, it, to me, transparency is about allowing light, a being, one, allowing our light to shine. 
but also mm-hmm. being to where we allow that. Yeah, it's like where that light can even pass through you. And if there is something there that needs to be corrected, your transparency should be able to point to that thing that needs to be corrected. My transparency. Because the light is able to change. Shameless. Say that again. My transparency is shameless. I'm naked and unashamed at all at all times. We should be. We really should be. The only reason we put on clothes was because of, remember Adam, what? He covered I'm up his feet. Right. And, and according to that story, his God said, these fig leaves aren't even adequate. Told him, who, who told you? you who know? told you? Which, which y'all know my translation of that was, when, and, and even studying it was, who told you it was something wrong with oh, being naked? Yeah, who told you wrong? And see, that's the thing. Now we just become naked. I mean, we don't become naked at all. We cover up the figs, not just clothes, but just hiding ourselves, everything else, walking in the test of whatever. I remember a, a, one of the, my fr- associates, whatever, well, she friend, she asked me, she was, she was like, I'm about to ask you, are you still, you still deal with it? And then she said, never mind. It don't matter. She said, because that's only 2% of who you are. 98% of just simply who you are, that 2% is how you put on your clothes or whatever, however the translation was. And so I was like, Oh, so I'm putting too much state in who I'm attracted to and putting giving that way once again way more power. I remember when I would be so nervous, I go in and do a job interview, but I would be so nervous that they thought I was gay. Mm. And so I wouldn't be sitting there, I'm about to get this, I'm about to lose this job because of this. And, you know, did I dress girl enough? Did I have my whatever? Or, you know, so I was battling myself. And then when I went to work, got the job. But when I went to work, I became, you know, I'm social services. So I, my clients and my youth was my, that's all I did. I didn't deal with adults. Mm-hmm. I didn't deal with adults because I didn't want the extra stuff to come along they came with along it. with it mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and they oh well you get it and you this and you that so i did not walk comfortably in who i was and even doing ministry i did not walk comfortably in ministry until i accepted or just was like this is who i am and this was after i even told my mom you know what i'm saying i got a little free but i was still by the still bound by church because i was conformed to that world and that culture that that conformed me and I wasn't transforming nothing I just was stuck in that and I could not uh, not God used me but it wasn't too it's so much easier when you can speak freely hmm. I, I, my life was a life of eggshells for so long hmm. Hmm. always hmm. walking on eggshells always trying to worry about what somebody gonna say let me make sure I say this Mary. let me make sure I say that right let me make sure all this stuff is perfect with me first or I can say before I get you know kicked to the curb and I still wasn't allowing God to freely use me look Natasha asks how do we get to be shameless that's my issue because I am bothered Ooh. Tiffany got that one. Man, why you? <laughs> um, I'm look, look, I'm looking at Tiffany too. I know that this is a good, that's a very great, that is good a question. great question. I know the answer to it too, but that's good. I, I, well, I ain't gonna say I know the answer, but I, mm. go ahead. Tiff, I think um, in order to become shameless, you kind of have to have some mirror moments and dive into why are you ashamed of these things? Why do these things bother you? What it, and those are, listen, uh, my partner and I call them mirror moments. Mirror moments are difficult, but they are necessary. If this yes. is something you're really trying to do and you don't, you know, you over it at this point, li- listen, stand in the mirror. It will make you cry. Conversations it with will make you cry. Yeah, because it's literally just going to be need to be you, God, in the mirror and maybe a box of tissue because, uh, yeah, you just got to dive in. You could do it fine. And then I'm going to tell you something. When you finally come to those um, those terms, grips, uh, realizations, oh, you will be so much more freer and you're going to re- you, you're not even going to realize why those things tainted you as much as they did to hold you back. So, uh, Mirror moments. 
That would be my suggestion. I definitely, I, I definitely agree with that. Like, I think the mirror, everybody know mirror has been my friend since years and years ago. Just to even, I would stand in the mirror naked and to look into my own eyes and have to one allow my eyes to be honest with me. Yes, you know, because because and and it it, it revealed both great things about me and it also revealed some things that needed correcting and to be bold enough to stand there and listen mm -hmm. to, to listen to both and be not be afraid to cry about so when i found out that i could kill somebody and just going on about my business like nothing ain't ever happened mm -hmm. it broke <laughs> it broke my yeah. heart <laughs> i mean that, that sounds light but it's like that broke my heart because everything of everything of my being since I can remember, it, although I was stubborn and angry and this is that, everything of my being since I can remember was very loving. I felt a certain way about people. I just mm -hmm. love people, even though I'm anti, you know, kind of so anti, so or I would say introverted. I when I say I love somebody or I care, I really do care, and I have their best interest at heart. But so to see that I could, I, you could shoot somebody and walk away like nothing happened, that was devastating. Mm -hmm. You know, for me and and everything in your ego tries to justify well, you would only do it because of this. And it's like, no, it wouldn't, that's not even going to that. Just to see that it's there mm -hmm. to see that you could do, even though you may not be likely to do this, you could mm -hmm. do it. And that brings you to a place of recognizing like Tiffany, I think you recognize these things and the things that need to be the reason that there doesn't have to be shame is because if it's something that you recognize that needs to be corrected. You, you have now, because you are aware of it, you have more power to correct than you did when you were just living under compulsion and doing whatever you, you know, whatever came. But now that you it's brought to your awareness, you can now begin moving towards, cor towards correction in those but, areas where it needs to be corrected. And I think the correction is, is being totally is being in truth with yourself. That's where the correction is. When you can honestly be honest with yourself period and this is my truth this is who i am this is where i am this is xyz and i'm listening tonight and you i think the thing is that the things that need to be corrected is more of our integrity is more of our character it's more of our intent not so much because when we deal with our character it manifests different things in a proper way. But for me, I guess for me, and, and, and since we're talking about my sexuality tonight, um, the only thing that needed to be corrected with my sexuality was loving me for who I am. Hmm. Because I didn't love me who I was at. Hmm. It wasn't that I needed to be corrected by the church because the church hmm. couldn't correct me. The thing is, I never was really condemned and connect, corrected by God. All I kept knowing in my spirit was God saying, love what I've created. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, my favorite scripture. Right? Favorite scripture. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Y'all know, everywhere I teach, I bring that scripture up. Anyway. Fearfully and wonderfully made. And Trinetta so, said, what's up, y'all? Who? Trinetta. What up? What up? Well, hey, girl. <laughs> so, for Katrina me, that, says that's true. Uh, mm -hmm. so, says that's true. So, when I love myself, it was nothing else that could happen. And I'm 40 now, and I'm still kind of, I'm really now walking into that enlightenment. Girl, you old. And I think she is old. I but I think that's powerful. I really think that that's powerful because, too, and, and you know, because I think what a lot of people think when you say I love myself or and even talking about shame and that people may think it's like, oh, well, this is just me and I'm just going to whatever, whatever. But I think when you come to a place of, of recognizing certain things and if you're loving yourself, if there is correction that needs to happen somewhere, you lovingly can enter into that space, even if that correction don't come for another five, 10, 20 years. But loving yourself, meaning just align yourself to be who and what you were created, right? Who and what you were created to be. We make loving ourselves this other stuff, you know. I'm gonna go have a, a self-care day, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, and whatever. Feeling. All right. Instead of just aligning myself to the best of my I know who I just thought about. Yeah, what? I'm sorry. 
Now that was an impact, Alicia. We can't do that on the last. I'm sorry, that was really uh-huh. sad. They just bless uh-huh. my goodies. I beseech thee. Uh, Shara, Shara says, be truthful with self. God makes no mistakes. Thank That's you. Cool. That part right there. Yeah. God and that's no easy mistake. to say, but people don't. Why we don't believe that, though? I don't know, because we look at ourselves as a mistake. Period. Because of, uh, we let me finish. Yeah, I say like, we look at like. ourselves as a mistake because of those around us. Okay. Because we Can try to part. we try to make it seem like attention is a bad thing. We all was created with a sense of attention, a a, a piece of attention. We need attention. God created us because he wanted some attention. Mm. Mm. So, and and so that meant no man to be alone. We needed some attending to one another. Attending to, mm-hmm. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Relation, that's called relationship. Exactly. So we're in relationship with one another. And we said, God, you didn't make no mistake. But everybody around me treated me like I'm a mistake. Because I can mm. feel that. I can hear Katrina, that. Katrina said, I also think it's a learned behavior. I think she's talking about maybe that those feelings, all of it ends up being learned. We learn it that mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that becomes like, you know, the martial law, whatever. We kind of overdo it in ourselves and not really living out of our spirit. It's important mm. to live out of our spirit and not in just in a church way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And actually, it ain't even a church way. Exactly. From, and that's what I say when I say we're not acquainted with. We're not really truly acquainted. We're acquainted with our personality. We're acquainted with we're acquainted with how we feel about something, but we're not really truly acquainted with our oneness in spirit, oneness with God, our spirit. You know, because and you know how I know it because we all we use words like spiritual growth. Your spirit does, and this is my thing. So, not this, these, these <laughs> views are not necessarily the views of GPS. Uh, shameless, way. but it's like we well, use I, no. Like, I, 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 what's that? This, I, I support that view that you're about to say. Go ahead, <laughs> it's like we use words like spiritual growth or whatever, and I think it's more so for our minds to understand it. But our spirits don't need to grow, we mature into the our, they're already it's already perfect, it's already complete, it's already one with God. Mm-hmm. We grow, we grow into. I think the awareness of these things, and I think it's so powerful, like that one song, you know, I can't sing a lot of worship songs, but there's this one worship song that says something about, um, let us be, let us become more aware of your presence. And I was like, that's so powerful because a lot of this stuff is becoming more aware exactly his presence, becoming more aware of our spirit, becoming more aware, because that's where perfection is. That's where, and when I say perfection, I don't mean without error, just means maturity. That's where our maturity is. That's where our wisdom is. That's where our ability to love is, our joy, our peace, and all. As we become more aware of the spiritual as the spirit aspect of our being, and I think that that's how also how we deal with the shame that's there. To recognize that one of the definitions you gave in the beginning was that shame dealt with something with behavior, right? But to recognize mm-hmm. that on the, that on the oh, spirit right. level, we are not our behavior. We are not just a, our behavior. We're spirit beyond that. And now when we come into that awareness, now we can begin to take a bit more control of our behaviors. Right. So anybody else got any comments to say anything? Have we answered any all questions? Yeah, I, I think I got them. I think I, mean, I this, got everybody. So good, but I thank y'all so much. Um, I want to say this. Also, there's something that the things that I was end up being ashamed of. I am connected to the people that's not ashamed of it. Mm. So, mm. my friends, y'all, the things that I would be ashamed of myself about, y'all walking boldness about some stuff. Okay? My partner, she have a Tiffany is attitude. You, is you living she, your life to us? <laughs> not sure it is. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, she has a Tiffany attitude. She don't care. 
you know, yeah. and most part, and it, and it comes with this confidence of, for me, it's like that confidence. So when I realized that too, it's kind of like, I kind of would hide behind the people because they gave me the push to keep going, to walk uh, uh, in front of them. Because if I'm behind them a little bit, I got this, I'm scoping you out. But now I got the motivation and the strength and the courage to keep walking ahead because I know you got my back. So if I got my, and that's why I love relationships. I love friendships, man. Y'all, y'all know I'm a friendship head. I, I'm easily can be broken um, when when that breaks up. So um, so we better not ever get divorced again because I can't deal with it no more. Um, so I'm sorry. <laughs> In a moment. So <laughs> well, we didn't get no divorce. We had a little separation, but nobody signed oh, no documents last we time. Didn't do divorce. We had a separation. We had a separation. We ain't signed no documents. Yeah, we ain't signed no documentation. And you um, know what, Monisha? I wonder if it's too like because you said like Tiffany don't Tiffany don't care. I don't think Tiffany don't care, but I know Tiffany a little bit. I think what it is is. Well, she appeared that she don't care because the people that say they don't care, they really do care. Don't wait. But no, what I what I think it is 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 not. I don't care. It's it is what it is. I can't. This is what it is. You know. So like, I can't care to. So say for instance, if I'm a tree, I want oh, you yeah. to honor me. I want you to honor me as a tree. But if you don't, I don't know what to tell you. I ain't nothing else I can do because I can't stop being a tree. So it's That's not so much that I don't care. It's just I can't be anything else. Exactly. So That's if good. you can't accept that this is what I am, where I am, and even how I am in the moment, then I don't know mm -hmm. what else to do. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what else. Why to do. you act like you know me? Quit playing. <laughs> that's, that's the best <laughs> way to say it. That is. That's really was. That was really that's good. Yes, I almost to say it. Say it. I'm just gonna ask for it back, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> and, and so yeah, but that's. But that's what I just gravitate to. You know what I'm saying? And people say, oh, you gravitate to who you are and this and that. And I realize some of the things I gravitate to, there's definitely this relationship I'm in is allowing me to see a lot. And because of all this other stuff that's happening too around it, allowing me to see a lot of me because I'm looking more. I've always been one to analyze myself, but I'm, I'm analyzing myself in a different place of freedom with myself. So it's not mm -hmm. so much of trying to find out what's wrong with me. I'm appreciating mm -hmm. everything that's right with me. Oh, Baba Shaya. You got to make me go church in the in the way. Because I, I said to you uh, a month ago, a month and a half ago, two months ago, whatever. And I was like, listen, I ain't got the whole word. <laughs> but it's like when I said, is there a sense in which, because you look at yourself a lot of times, at least from my understanding, as inadequate. Mm -hmm. As inadequate, as the one that needs to make up all of these deficits and whatever. And yes, own them where they need to be owned, but not to the degree that you lose sight of you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Not to the degree where you lose sight of, I think, I forgot how I worded it, but it was like where I'm like, God wants you to relook again and understand your oneness with him and mm -hmm. understand that at the very core of your essence and at the, the, ooh, oh, at the core of your being, there is... There is nothing wrong with you. You know, so to be able to stand in that authentic power and recognize, yeah, I got a whole bunch of stuff going on in my life. But who don't? Right. And some people is more exposed than others, or some people gets a little messier than others. But at the very heart of all of this, it's like, are you, and I, I feel like God was, was bringing you back to this and bringing you to this. So I'm asking, I guess I would ask that question too, is how are you doing with that? Not even necessarily just looking at other people, that are doing it because the other people are just examples. But how are you doing with recognizing this alignment within you? That's like, look, I got a whole bunch of shh going on. However, I know that I know that I know that I know that I am one with my father. That he's given me glory for that. To be hmm. to, to actually be one with him and to recognize that I can live my life from my light. Because like you said, most of the tension goes to how you need to fix something. Mm -hmm. instead of recognizing the power that you got to fix it. And actually, the question cancels it out. If you ask the question of, or if you're setting all of the focus on what you need to fix, obviously something and you must know how to fix it. Mm. You wouldn't yep. even ask the question. So there's something, so then tap into, why don't we tap, and, and all of us, 
why don't we tap into that part that recognized the problem? It wasn't your la- it wasn't your deficiency that recognized a problem. Right. So that must say that somewhere in us is wisdom. Somewhere in us is a spiritual intelligence that we've had shut up and stifled by our egos and by society and by religion and by whatever. And we lose sight of the fact that, man, our little ounce of light can brighten a dark room. Yes. Your light ain't got to be as big as the room that it's in. Ah, That was good. uh, (laughs) No, go ahead. is saying. <clears throat> even on the in the natural realm of it in our everyday walks, I think oftentimes we forget or we set aside or we downplay what we bring to the table. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes yes. shame overpowered so much of it that we often forget who we are and what we actually bring to the table. And we bring the damn table most of the time. So, I mean, yeah. Talk this, to me. Mm-hmm. Talk to me because I lived in that. Yeah, I lived in it, and I was just. And that's, told. The, that's the that's the and I think that maybe there needs to be some shifts in how we all just as beings begin to look at ourselves and see ourselves. I think I posted the other day: don't ever lose sight of your friend's light. Don't ever lose sight, and which includes your family, and it includes yourself. Don't ever lose sight of our light. And I was saying that because I personally, you know, I think I told you I was like, man, I feel like my light is dimming mm-hmm. or whatever. But. But the thing that we have to focus on, but you still got some light that's there. And when I when I just said what I said about the window, I grabbed this candle. It's like this room, if I turn the lights off, it's going to be gross darkness in this room. But this one little bitty candle ain't as big as this room. But as soon as I light it, it'll light up this room. So it's like your light don't even have to be as big as the issue that you see or whatever. All you need to recognize is that you have this light in you. That even just that little seed of righteousness on the inside of us can handle the shame that we tend to face or that we tend to deal with, or this is that and the other. But for some reason, again, we're life negative, we're relationship negative or whatever. Our minds take us more so to the defi- to the deficit instead of taking us to the image of God mm-hmm. on the inside, the image and likeness on the inside of us that is, is just really there. But mm, yeah, this little was- light can be the table. Like Tiffany said, you, sometimes you bring the whole dog on the table and yeah. the food that's sitting there. Right, because I know I can. I prepare, you know, I would make that comment. He said, "Oh, I didn't prepare you a table and everything else. You, you want to eat at somebody else's because I know what I bring to the table." So, um, thank y'all so much, man. We can go about this for a while. Um, I appreciate y'all for really, really coming in. You, I'm going to answer your question because you said, "How am I overcoming the shame?" Or you know, whatever you just said, and it's an everyday thing. Because today I had a moment where I started questioning myself again. And I'm like, God, am I somebody was telling me I have changed in my character, whatever. And I'm and I say, Well, God, have I changed? Have I become this person that they send the negativity, whatever the case may be? And I started trying to defend myself once again. And mm-hmm. so I, I was about to have a moment in the phone rang because I said, Well, God. It was coming with the blessings or whatever. And I'm like, because it was saying, you know, God ain't going to bless you or something to the degree. And I got a phone call and said, I got a love package uh, I'm about to bring to you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. And so the more I have been speaking and transparent and turning 40 and, you know, month of December, just sharing little nuggets. Uh, I know that sounds so weird. Sharing little nuggets of things that um, I no. have dealt with. I have seen the more I have opened up, the more God have defended and loved on me in different ways. Mm. So it's been something happening quickly, you mm. know, mm. through this whole thing. And when I got that phone call, like, I got something to bring you, you know, you at the house, but I said, skip me. And I said, wow, you got God, you got a sense of humor. This weekend, um, I said, God, I want newness, new, I know this, whatever, but I do want the real genuine people in my life, in my arena, because y'all are so many miles away. You know what I'm saying? And so, <clears throat> y'all came, y'all know y'all came in your place, but that's not what I'm saying. But right, I was going to get an attitude, but I'm glad you got together. <laughs> okay. 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 I know, I know Tiffany, I know Tiffany, but to know that this past weekend, and I'm closing this up. I'm gonna be a preacher and try to do one close. <laughs> yeah, this, no, no, this is your third. This is actually your third. You're on your third. 
And in the Baptist Church, you get three, and you own your third. College, so, don't answer tomorrow. We finna be here all night. Come on, little right, come bitch. On, like, come on. <clears throat> so, this past weekend, I was in, me and my babe was invited to a trip. And all we had to do was spend, come and just spend, have spending money. And we didn't even need that. We came in and literally everything was taken care of. And it was a blessing because it was their birthday, but they served us on their day mm. of celebration. Mm. And so it was something That's that came to all the of us. Huh? That's what so, they came to the planet for. Your birthday yeah. ain't about you. Your birthday is the day you came to serve. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, go ahead. Because <laughs> so, when my birthday come, I expect y'all to do something. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so I was going to, I was kind of saying like, man, I didn't have this yet or I, I want to get them something or whatever the case was. But what, what I, I am going to share this with them. What they brought was healing. Because mm. I sat at the table and I was you know, they, we did a sip and paint. I had a great time. Um, did a sip and paint. And so I was just laughing to myself because God was showing me, this This is how I'm healing you. I'm answering your prayers. Mm. I'm answering everything, the little things that you have requested for me. I'm answering them. And I was like, wow. It was in the mountains. Y'all were scared as hell driving. But anyway, because um, y'all don't have to do them difficult drives. But um <laughs> I I promise you that I don't even know since a couple of months I've just literally have been being healed in ways that I didn't even realize I needed healing. Well, I would like to say I'm very proud of you. I am very, very proud of you and um you walking into this new realm of um knowledge and oneness and um what they call it, you you being woke. Girl, I hate the young people. I can't stand these young people. Um, but you're doing it. You know, you're doing it and uh, it look good on you. It looks good on you. And I, I want you to keep pushing, baby. You got this. Thank you. Thank you. And I be, you know, yeah. It's y'all. Y'all got y'all always have me. God got me. And I just thank y'all. I really thank y'all for joining me. I have Leanza the Apostle. If any of y'all do not know. He is my apostle, my cover, my spiritual cover have always been. He was the first one to sign them papers, you know, for real, for real. Um, he did sign right, them papers, girl. He did sign papers, him and Dr. Ivan Riley. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, that's definitely my covering. And my best friend covering, Tiffany, has covered me since day one in 1995. Christ, um, you going to tell our business? You going to tell our oh, business? I showed, I showed it. Um, but yeah, it's been forever, and I we have been in definitely covenant with each other. And I love y'all. Thank y'all, Facebook, for joining in. Um, y'all have any other comments, questions, concerns? Please inbox me, um, and I can get it to one of them. Um, y'all want to share y'all story? Please inbox me because I was my first guest, but they will probably be on again, being other guests. And um. Yeah, thank y'all for that's it. Just I'm happy y'all was here. Hope y'all got something that y'all needed. I hope we was able to help y'all in y'all journey. So I'm signing off. Yo, GPS, love you. God's personal servant. Hi, people. <laughs>